All right, Mr. Ellis, now you won't be able to hear my voice. You, you kind of telling me, uh, making statements when I ask you for questions. So, um, when did you first know? I was bad, I was bad, I was bad. <laughs> when did you first know that you were, um, I guess I want to say in presence of greatness with your dad and, and, and what, what impact he had on the community? Um, I can say ever since I was very young age, five or six, I realized my dad's greatness. Um, growing up, you know, the son of an artist, I'm always surrounded by art, always in museums. The, our home was an art gallery, paintings everywhere. And so it becomes, you become a little numb to it. Like, okay, okay, nice art museum, okay, black history, culture. You see it all the time. But really until I got older, until my college years, early 20s, I realized, okay, wow, there's a level of importance and significance that my dad does. He's not just an artist or, you know, just doing random paintings. There's like a message, there's a theme, there's intent and like purposeful intent behind his artwork and what he paints, you know, just to spread the awareness of black history and culture. And uh, you decided to start, you know, getting yourself out there so far as uh, being uh, impactful in your art. Talk about what you do in now, right now, and from his influence. Oh, definitely. Well, my dad, he's an artist, so if, if it was his wish, he would love for, you know, both of his kids to be artists as well, too, visual painters. But acting is my passion. That's my first love. That's my art. Uh, my parents introduced me to that at age seven, actually, at the Ensemble Theater. That's where I took my first acting class. And um, ever since then, it's like, it's just stuck with me and I've stuck with it. I attended HSPVA, the High School for the Performing and Visual Arts for Musical Theater. And uh, my parents are just very big on following your passion and doing what you love. So ever since I was young, you know, they would have us traveling to Paris or like visiting different countries, putting me in acting camps. Um, I remember my mom, she took me to Atlanta to visit the Tasha Smith acting workshop. Uh, she's one of Tyler Perry's actors. And so it was always like ingrained in my head, like, okay, I can do anything. Like in the arts, like it's okay to follow that, uh, you know, that world and go down that lane because maybe not most parents would, you know, you push their kids to pursue that, you know? That's good. That's what I was trying to get at is yeah. the art side of, of what you do. And uh, talk about some of your upcoming stuff that you got going on and, and, and your endeavors. Um, well, I'm signed to Pastor Amy Bosby Talent Agency here in Houston, Texas. And so I've done quite a bit of commercial and TV work. I've guest starred in Marvel's Cloak and Dagger, uh, the Purge TV series, Owns Cherish the Day, uh, Queen Sugar, which also premieres on OWN. And recently I did a Lifetime Movie Network film that was actually shot here in Houston. So now you're kind of doing a documentary in regards to your father and his artwork and stuff like that. Talk about uh, that and, and, and its importance. Okay, and I'll also add that uh, in 2021, the short film that I did, Mr. and Mrs. Ellis, was nominated for an NAACP Image Award. So that was like pretty exciting. What is that about? Um, so it's about it's about a couple, Mr. and Mrs. Ellis, they're about to get married, and um, Xavier Ellis, who I played, the groom. Some secrets come out about his childhood and what went on with his parents and stuff, so it comes out on the big wedding day, and you have to just tune in and see how it ends. It's a pretty good film, good thriller, drama too. But right now I'm working on Juneteenth Champions. So it started off as an art exhibition at the Houston Museum of African American Culture. It's 30 self-portraits of 30 individuals who made contributions into getting Juneteenth recognized as, as the 11th federal holiday. Um, so it was, at the, it was on display at the Houston Museum of African American Culture for 30 days of June 2022. And so I guess I'm gonna give myself the credit. I sort of had the idea to say, Dad, let's turn this exhibition, let's get it on camera, film it, and turn it into a documentary. And so we did exactly just that. So I'm there showcasing the artwork at the exhibition, explaining the significance about each Juneteenth, each Juneteenth champion, like Tina Knowles Lawson, Naomi Carrier, Sam Collins III, Isola Ethel Collins, and multiple other champions. And so we actually had featured sit-down interviews with some of the living Juneteenth champions, like Naomi Mitchell Carrier and Sam Collins III. And I'm actually in the process of working on the second uh, part of this documentary, which is to interview some of the other living Juneteenth champions, like of course Tina Knowles Lawson, Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. But um, we have a big red carpet premiere uh, coming up this summer, June 2023, at the Ensemble Theater. Um, oh, my bad. 
Right. Uh, yeah, so it'll be at the Ensemble Theater, uh, June 2023. And so I just chose to release this in June just because it's Juneteenth, so it just makes sense to have it in that month. And we filmed it last month in June as well, too. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us, reach out to us when it gets closer to that date. Oh, definitely. So that we can, uh, we can yeah. give, give it some light. Um, Let me ask you this. Children's Museum. Okay, I can say that, yeah. too, but I think you're right. Uh, Go ahead. So now since we're Black History Month pro quickly approaching, we actually have another exhibition coming up, a pop-up, one-day pop-up exhibit at the Houston's Children's Museum. And so we'll be bringing the exhibition there for the kids on a Saturday and also have a documentary screening of the documentary. You have all the rights to the interviews and stuff like that? Yeah, okay. so everyone who's actually in it, we had to make them sign. Right, right. Because well. I might ask if you can share some of that with us. Though, yeah. Okay, definitely. Yeah. Uh, but I don't want to do it unless you have oh, the rights. That's a good idea. Yeah. Um, uh, what else? What else could you add? Growing up in a household, yeah, with with a guy that's got his Joe Turner come and going. Joe Turner's come and going, okay. You remember Joe Turner's come and going? <laughs> yeah, that's your first that. play as a lesbian. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, maybe I can tie that in about what you're about to say as well too. Growing up with a, with with a dad that has a paintbrush in his hand all the time and, <laughs> and so focused on the black uh, experience. Experience. What did you call it? Experience. experience. Black experience. Uh, how do you feel like that impacted you uh, and has molded you and who you are today? Well, okay, um, just growing up in a household with a father who has a paintbrush in his hand 24 7. Like I said earlier, so I sort of touched on it. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Don't yeah. say that part. Oh, don't, no. Don't, don't say, don't say it earlier because okay. we, might, we might edit it edit. somewhere else. Uh, okay. But I like the way you started it, though. I was going to repeat what I said, like it just gave me the confidence. Yeah, but that like it's the first time you've seen okay, it. Okay, cool. Because I don't know where I'm going to use it. Perfect, cool. So, okay. Perfect. I like it, but, but I like it. <laughs> yeah. ready to go. That's why I stopped you. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I'll give you that again. <laughs> yes, okay. sir. Go ahead. So, growing up in a household with a father with a paintbrush in his hand 24 7 definitely just instilled the importance of the arts in my head, you know? And I think that's what it created, created me to be the artist who I am today to do film, television work, commercial work. No, I don't have the gift of painting with the paintbrush. I wish I could, I tried, but um, it just it just still teaches me to this day. I think the older I get, I just have more of appreciation for the arts, but not so just the arts, but also black history and culture as well too. And every day I'm learning, like I'll see a painting, I'll ask my dad about something, be like, oh, wow, well, okay, I'm learning about Plessy versus Ferguson, or I'm learning about 1619, or I'm learning about uh, Selma, or what happened in Tulsa, you know, just so many different things, you know. So I just appreciate my dad, and I see him not just as an artist, but as a historian, as an educator, the chairman on this commission, chairman on that commission, museum director, doing so many different things, a teacher, a leader in the community. So yeah, 